greenhouse permits, do you need them? You know, that's a question we've been asked from time to time is, do you need a building permit to put up a greenhouse? And in most cases, no, you don't. Uh, you should always check first, but in 15 years and thousands and thousands of greenhouse kits, I only know of one, maybe two cases where, um, you know, we, the, the person who bought the greenhouse was not able to, to put it up because of problems. And, um, you know, and that was a pretty strange deal right there. I mean, they basically, there was a, a homeowners um, association that was just absolutely out of control. They, this particular greenhouse was one of the nicest ones we have. And I, I mean, a really nice greenhouse. I'm thinking maybe 10, 15,000 bucks. And, you know, it wasn't good enough for the neighborhood. So, I mean, if, you, if you're in that sort of a, a neighborhood, you probably already know you need to check before you do anything. If they've been out, you know, measuring your grass to see how tall it is, you know, you definitely check with your, your local, not only your local city, but, you know, if you're in a homeowners association. Uh, in most cases, though, because a greenhouse is not treated as a permanent structure, uh, unless you've poured a foundation for it, you could, you know, with a, you know, get three or four people, pick it up and move it to another part of your yard. So it's not permanent. And since it's not a permanent structure, in almost every case, it, it does not require a permit. And some greenhouses you can easily take down, not just the, you know, the pop-up portable ones, but, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot to take it down even in sections. So if you can take it down for a season, or for winter, for example, then, you know, you really can say, hey, this doesn't, you know, a permit is not applicable for this case. Now, a lot of times, uh, if you look, the greenhouses aren't large enough to require a permit. You know, most greenhouse kits that you're going to put in your backyard are you know, the 6x8s, the 8x10s. An 8x10 is a pretty large backyard greenhouse, and that's only 80 square feet. I don't, I don't know of very many situations you'd run into where something under 100 square foot would require any kind of permitting. But you should always check. Like I said, the things you want to look out for are your homeowners associations. And if you're going with a glass greenhouse, uh, I've, I've only read this, I have not encountered it, but I've seen where people have ran into issues if you're putting in so much glass, there's you know, some, somewhere, maybe it's a, Maybe it's one of those internet rumors and I didn't, I didn't do enough research on it, but I know I've read that someone you know, had some kind of requirements for that, and that may only be for commercial. And speaking of commercial, uh, you know, if you're using this for a greenhouse for a commercial project, uh, you also want to check and make sure there's nothing that's going to trip you up there. For example, um, I had a pretty large greenhouse set up for uh, a pond application. Uh, all that was in the greenhouse was just rows and rows of tanks. You know, there were tanks all along the bottom and narrow, thin, you know, thin tanks running on all the shelving. And this greenhouse was used for pond plants, to grow pond plants. And um, I never had any problems with any other agency except the fire department. I mean, if you can imagine, here's a greenhouse kit that is filled with water. The humidity, you know, is what? You know, it's South Texas, Louisiana humidity. It's like 98% in there. And all it is is full of pond plants and full of water. And they come in and want me to put in a fire sprinkler system. And, and you know, and that was, uh, you know, something that gave me a lot of trouble for, oh, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes until I was able to, you know, call in over the, the local guy's head and say, come on, this is ridiculous. So be aware that occasionally, very, very occasionally, you're going to run into some kind of issues, and it's always best to check first. But come on, out of just 15 years and thousands and thousands of kits, what percentage of those people have actually checked on it? And to only have two problems makes me think that in almost every situation, you're going to be okay.